Hey folks, today's video is going to be about dump files. It's going to be an intro on how to capture dump files and a little bit about why you would want to use a dump file. Dumps get called a lot of different names. You'll hear them called mini dumps, core files, crash dumps. I usually just call them dumps though. The main point of a dump file is to capture the state of a process at a single point in time. At a particular point of interest, like when the process is crashing, or when the process is using too much CPU and is not responsive. In order to do that, a dump file needs to contain the entire memory for the process, as well as the state of any executing threads and any modules that are loaded into the process. I mentioned a few reasons why you might want to capture a dump file, and the most common is probably going to be when an uncaught exception is about to make the process crash. We can capture the state of the process right as that exception is occurring so that we can see what went wrong that made the program crash. There are other reasons why you might want to capture a dump though. If you want to see what a process is doing when it's taking up too much CPU, that's something that you can sometimes easily debug just by looking at a dump and seeing what's going on in the process. There are other cases too, such as deadlocks or other types of hangs where a program is unresponsive, and even if it's not using up CPU, it's not doing what it's supposed to. There are some other cases where dumps are useful when a process is not behaving as you expect it, but in most cases, it's probably going to fall in one of those categories. It's either a hang, a crash, or some other type of high CPU usage. In order to show you how to capture a crash dump, I've written a little test program that can have a couple different types of bad behavior that are sort of similar to what you might see in the real world. We can make the program hang, we can make the program hit an access violation, or we can make the program just spin using CPU. Let's start out by looking at a hang and see what kinds of ways we can do to capture a dump of that process. So we'll go ahead and do console test app and hang. And you can see the app is just running. Uh, nothing's going on here. Um, one way that we can capture a dump of that process is we can just go ahead in task manager and find that, uh, find that process. And we can actually create a dump file right from here. I can go and create dump file. Um, and you can see we've got a dump file that was created. So we can go ahead and open that file location and we can see we've got a DMP file um, and I'm going to double click on that real quick. We'll open that with WinBug preview. And we can see that we've got, uh, we've got a dump file here. Uh, let's show that and let's go ahead and look at our thread stack frame. And we can see that we are sitting right where we thought we would be, right in that hang. Now, we're in the debugger here, uh, and that's actually a different way that we can capture a dump, and probably the way that I use it most frequently, is if we're in the debugger already, we can capture a crash dump. So let's close some of these windows. Let's start a new debugging session. Uh, let me go grab the path here. Um, Kill that, uh, get the path here. I'm gonna launch a uh, new executable. We're gonna launch console test app with arguments of hang. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and run that. So continuing execution and uh, nothing's happening obviously. So we're gonna go ahead and, uh, and break in. Let's take a look at thread zero, which is probably where we're going to see oh, that's the the thread that we broke in on let's let's check all our threads to find where that is uh and we can see oh yep it was thread zero thread zero we've got our main function okay so that's where we are now let's say that we want to capture this dump file and maybe we want to hand it off to somebody else even though we already have it in the debugger we want to capture this point in time well there's a debugger command called dot dump and it takes a couple of flags, but let's just start with the basic flags. Um, slash M, which is for a mini dump, which is the type of uh, dump that we're going to capture. And then uh, A, which means to include all memory. 
And then the last uh, path here is just going to be, uh, or the last parameter here is going to be the path where we're going to capture it. So I'll just go C drive dumps uh, test dump DMP. And I probably didn't create dumps. Uh, yep, yeah, let's put it on D drive. That's where I put this. Okay, so we've written our dump out. So I'm going to go ahead and stop debugging. And we're going to go ahead and open that dump file now. And we're going to go to D drive dumps. See our test dump right there. And go ahead and open that. And we are back at the exact state that we were on the live process. But now we have it preserved as a dump file here. So let's go ahead and close all these out. Now, using Task Manager to capture a dump of a process is fine if the process is running and it's not crashing, and maybe you want to get a dump of the process because it's using too much CPU. And using the debugger to capture a process is great if you can attach the debugger to the process before the point in time where you want to capture the dump. But there are other cases where you want to capture a dump and maybe you don't have the ability of attaching a debugger ahead of time or maybe you don't know when you're going to want to capture that dump. It's going to be sometime much later in the future and you don't have the ability of uh, keeping the debugger attached the whole time. Or another situation that you might hit is uh, maybe you're trying to capture a dump of something that's on a custom machine or in production. And in those cases, you can't really use uh, a, a, you know, a debugger session and it's probably not going to be the right uh, decision to use task manager to capture the dump uh, and for those cases there's uh, some other tools that you can use and I think probably one of the most useful tools for capturing dumps in those situations is going to be proc dump. Uh, proc dump is uh, a tool that you can get from uh, sysinternals uh, so you can go to live.sysinternals.com or if you've got winget you could just do winget install sysinternals here uh, and then that's going to go ahead and get you all of the incredibly useful sysinternals tools. Uh, but the one specifically that we're going to talk about here is going to be proc dump. And I'm going to cancel it because I've already got this installed. Uh, we can just see proc dump here and we can see all the command line parameters. There are a ton of parameters that you can pass to proc dump. And honestly, I don't even know everything that you can do with proc dump. It, it is capable of a ton of different things. But I'm going to give you a couple of examples where I think it's particularly useful. And the two examples, well, let's just start with the first example. The first example where I think it's really useful to use proc dump is when it can monitor a process for uh, an unhandled exception for something that's going to crash the process. And so to do that, we're going to go ahead and run proc dump. We're going to say dash MA. This is very similar to the MA flags that we gave earlier. Um, this is the, the uh, a dump that's going to include all memory. And we're going to do dash E. And uh, if I could find the dash E flag here, dash E is write a dump when the process encounters an unhandled exception. Um, and you can also uh, control whether you want to use first chance ex exceptions or second chance, but let's just leave that uh, off for now. So we want to capture a dump of a process when it hits an unhandled exception. And then we're going to use the dash W to uh, filter uh, more specifically to our program, which is console test app, right? And so I'm just going to go ahead and run it. And our process is not yet even running. But proc dump can sit here waiting for that process to start and waiting for that process to crash. So for that case, let's go ahead. Let's use the AV case uh, where, that we've got here. So we're going to console test app. Let's bring this one so you can see what happens and tell it to AV. And the first thing that you'll see is that, it's, that it's, it finds that the process has started. It finds the process ID. You can see where it started from and everything like that. And about a second later, because we've got this little sleep here, a second later, it's going to detect that there was an unhandled access violation. And as soon as it does that, it's capturing the dump in the directory where we're running this. Uh, and we can go and take a look at that dump now. Let's go ahead and go to that directory. Uh, actually, let's just open that directly in the debugger. 
So I'm going to start up window bug preview. And we're going to go ahead and press control D um, and open that dump file. And you can see that we've got a dump file that is right where we expected the crash to be. This is doing a, uh, a null pointer dereference. We're just trying to write a character to uh, a string pointer that's uh, already null. And so proc dump managed to get a uh, capture a crash dump of the process right as it was crashing. And that, that can be really, really useful. That's really great. Um, there's one other case that I think is really useful, and that is capturing a crash dump of a process when it's using too much CPU. There's also hangs, um, but I didn't write a graphical test program, so let's just look at the CPU one for now. Um, and so the parameters for that are just, just a little bit more complicated. So we're still going to do proc dump dash MA. Uh, we're going to still capture the same type of dump here. And we're going to do dash F5, or sorry, dash S5, dash C10. And if we look what these do, let's go ahead and try to find those. Uh, consecutive seconds before a dump is written. So we're going to wait for five seconds. And what we're looking for for five seconds is CPU threshold. So when this process has used CPU above 10% for five seconds, we're going to go ahead and capture a dump. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, the dash W on here, console test app, uh, and run that one again. Okay, so it is waiting for the process to start. We've got this spin command line argument that we can pass here, which is just going to spin and use up CPU. Go ahead and run it. We can see proc dump has detected the process has started, and it's detecting CPU is above 12%. Hits it for five seconds, and that's our trigger. And it's going to go ahead and capture a dump file here. So let's go ahead and kill console test app now. Let's get that path here. I'm going to go ahead and start window bug preview again. Okay. And let's open the dump that was just created. And let's see. You can see the current frame where it's captured it is right where we are spinning and using up CPU. So that's really useful. You can imagine this uh, running for multiple days. Maybe you get random CPU spikes that you can't explain, and you just want to get a crash dump at that point in time. In those cases, proc dump is a lifesaver. It can get you the exact crash dump that you need. And once we're in here, not only do we get the stack frame where all the CPU is being used, but we can examine the state of the process to see you know, maybe there's a, a chain of events that leads up to this that we want to understand. So let's go ahead and close that out now. Clear these windows again. Now there's one other way that I'll show you to capture a dump that I think is really useful. And it's not quite as powerful as proc dump, but I think it's useful just as a, a tool in your pocket in case there is a, a scenario where you can't use proc dump. And the, the last one that I'm going to talk with you about is the local dumps registry key. And so you can find, if you just search for local dumps, you'll find this documentation page on collecting user mode dumps. There's a registry key that you can set that is going to go ahead and capture uh, crash dumps of a process as it's crashing and it's being done by the Windows error reporting system. So uh, it's, it's quite reliable at uh, uh, popping in and capturing dumps. Um, if nothing else works, this will always work to capture the dump that you, uh, that you need. And so there's a couple register keys that we're going to have to configure. So uh, I've navigated to this key that we're talking about here. So we need to use registry values under the Windows error reporting local dumps key. Um, it actually doesn't exist by default, so we're going to have to create a new one called local dumps. Uh, and then there's a few keys that we have to configure. The first one is uh, you can do a, a reg SZ or just regular uh, reg uh, expand SZ or reg SZ. Call it dump folder. Um, let's go ahead and put that as D drive dumps. Uh, and before I get too far, let me go ahead and just clear out 
this directory so that we don't get confused. Uh, and then there's a few other parameters that we can set. Um, the dump count. So let's go ahead and do a new D word key dump count. Let's capture up to five dumps. We're going to do a new D word for dump type. And if we select two here, this is going to be equivalent of that dash MA that we've been using for proc dump and for uh, wind debug to get dump folder, dump count, dump type. Uh, custom dump flags, you can specify more specific types of mini dumps, but in most cases, I just don't think that you're going to need to, to play with that unless you really need to capture a, a smaller dump for some reason. Um, and so these are global settings. You can look a little bit farther in this documentation. You can set it for a specific application. Uh, but these keys are going to capture any, any, any crashes that happen on the whole system. So let's go ahead and test these. Uh, let's go ahead and do the access violation case again. So we saw it pause there for a second. Uh, and you can see that uh, those registered keys have already taken effect. We've captured a crash dump. Let's go ahead and open that in Windebug preview. So let's go ahead and open that here. Uh, we can see it's an access violation. Let's go ahead and look at our stack. Uh, and you'll see this is a little bit different than what we saw before because we're actually seeing the crash after Windows error reporting uh, has started uh, processing this. Um, but we can do a dot ECXR um, and that's going to get us back to the uh, context that is for the actual crash. And you can see we've jumped back to the same point in the program that we've seen before where that access violation is being caused. So that's a useful tool to have, um, not quite as powerful or flexible as um, proc dump, but still it's a useful thing to have available to you. Uh, make sure to delete that if you're not using that, but uh, that's, that's a useful tool. That covers the basics for how to capture crash dumps and view them in Windabug. If you like this video, let me know in the comments or send me a message on Twitter. Thanks for watching!